let's hunker down to some chemistry. Specifically, this number here. What is this number? It is known as Avogadro's number. For number subscript A. This is so significant in chemistry and especially when we are talking about a mole. So when we use this term, one mole, it is completely analogous to using the word dozen when we mean 12. Whereas here, when we say one mole of something, that means we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of that something. And that can be anything. Usually in chemistry, we're talking about molecules or atoms, or photons of light. But we really do need to work with numbers that are this large in order to be able to see what it is we're working with, or be able to measure it, measure the mass of it, or the volume of it. But we can use this number in a lot of different ways, and I wanted to give an example. And here's the question that's being asked. So we're asked this question, can we determine how many atoms of the element carbon are there in glucose if we have 30.5 grams of it? We do need to know the formula. C6H12O6. And it will be very handy to also know what is the molecular weight. And often in problems like this, you are given what the molecular weight is, also known as the molar mass. But if you're not given it, you can also calculate it by using the periodic table. And calculating the molar masses is something I talk about in another video, so if you want to look more into that, you can. But for this problem, we are 
going to be starting out with what we know, what we've been given. So, uh, we start out there and use that rule of thumb when in doubt, calculate moles. And we can calculate moles from grams by using the molar mass. Because this is telling us how many grams there are in one mole. But that also means that in one mole, there are this many grams. So you can use the molar mass as a ratio that's either grams, this many grams over moles, like we have here, or one mole of it over that many grams. Either one of these is correct, so you can use it whichever way you need to, depending on what you're converting out of. Here we want grams to cancel. So we take 30.5 and divide. And we get point one six nine moles. And this is again this is of the glucose. We can determine how many moles of carbon atoms there are. And that gets us one step closer to knowing how many atoms are there. So, we can start out. I'm going to move this up. Get a little bit. is the ratio of moles of carbon atoms over moles of the molecules of glucose. Okay, so every mole of this whole molecule, we've got six carbon atoms in there. So there's six moles. So now we have moles of glucose cancel. So we are essentially multiplying 0.169 times 6. And we get 1. So now we want to determine how many carbon atoms there are. The question isn't asking how many moles of carbon atoms, but how many actual atoms there are. So this, this is where we invoke Avogadro's number. Because we know that for 
for every mole of carbon atoms, there will be this many of those carbon atoms. So let's do this final calculation here. And set it up. Oh, one sec. Moles. Carbon atoms. Okay. So here is where we've got. Again, we can think of this as a ratio. I'm going to write it out this way. Six point oh two carbon atoms for every mole, or in other words, per mole of the carbon atom. So let's just pause for one second and reflect on this. We might be tempted to get confused because we see carbon atoms here, carbon atoms here. Wait, wouldn't those just cancel out? But what we are pointing out here is that there's this many carbon atoms per mole. So it's really this mole that we're having cancel out. And in this case, it's moles of carbon atoms. So in this calculation, we are going to multiply this value moles times Avogadro's number. And we get times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. And just remembering back to what the question is asking, this is how many of those atoms you would have in to point out one more thing here with our final answer, and that has to do with the number of significant figures, okay, because notice how here we have four, here we have four, so we might think, hmm, that should be four, but this is the final answer that has been given from the original question. And our original question here has three significant figures. And if we're following the rules of significant figures with multiplication and division, we see here we've got, I just, I kept it at three. Here, I allowed it to expand a little bit to four. Okay, and that's okay to carry along some significant figures before you give the final answer. But you do want to double check in your final answer and make sure your number of significant figures is correct based on the question as it is given and the rules of significant figures. All right, so there is an overview of how you can use Avogadro's number and moles. And it's also a good example of dimensional analysis. 
and thinking about where you're starting off, where you want to head, how to make these ratios, all right? Using moles, converting, and also thinking about what these formula mean when you have a molecule, recognizing the number of each one of those elements that's in that molecule. And you can pull those out and you can create a ratio with air, like we did here, six moles of carbon atoms for every molecule. So quite a few concepts that we're going over here that hopefully you gained something from. So let me know if you have questions about this or whatever other topics that you would like me to go over for you. And I will see you again real soon. Thank you, as always, for your questions, your lovely comments. I always love hearing from you. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so I can let you know when my next videos are coming out.